Welcome to our tutorial about floating point math. Here we've got three text boxes text box X, text box Y, and text box Z. Text boxes X and Y receive input from the user. Text box Z displays the result of the scripted calculation. Variables X, Y, and Z are declared here as integers. Let's see how this all works. We'll enter 2 in text boxes X and Y and click Compute. As a result, I have a value of 4. If I enter a decimal number and click Compute, I end up with the same result. 2.2 .2 times 2, I end up with 4. That's because the entry is rounded to the nearest integer value. If I enter 2.6, for example, and click Compute again, 2.6 was rounded up to 3, giving us a total value of 6. The fractional value of the number is lost. Let's change our code a bit. We'll declare our variables as doubles instead of integers by replacing the percentage sign suffix with the pound sign suffix. Let's test it out again. Let me enter a fractional number in one of the boxes. Compute, and now our result shows the fractional part. I'm going to use this example to segue into the concept of floating point numbers. You notate floating point numbers as a value between 1 and 10 expressed as a given power of 10. Let's take a look at the numbers I have listed here. For example, 100,001 is notated here as 1.0001 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5. Let's take a look at my second number. 0.0010001 is written as 1.0001 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 3. In other words, the decimal point floats to the position after the first digit in both of these cases. As a result, both large and small numbers can be represented with the same high degree of precision. Let's give some additional perspective here. The double precision floating point number can hold a value of between minus 1.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 308 all the way to 1.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 308. If we measure the distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is 152 million kilometers, we can get a degree of accuracy with this method in the neighborhood of 10 microns, or one hundredth of a millimeter. My point is this, you should avoid using double precision numbers unless you require more accuracy than the single precision type allows. The single precision type can represent any value from minus 3.4 times 10 to the power of 38, all the way up to 3.4 times 10 to the power of 38. In other words, if we measured the same distance between the Earth and the Sun, we'd get an accuracy to the degree of approximately 200 meters, not quite as accurate as the double precision system at one hundredth of a millimeter, but still very accurate. Here we've got some examples of declaring variables as single or double. And this concludes our tutorial about floating point math.